everyone. Uh, I am the Baron, and we are now talking some more about melee movements and formations. So, <laughs> with always, we'll talk a little bit about what we discussed before. Uh, what we discussed before was essentially creating small individual units, usually uh, a two-person unit that's uh, overpowering a single person, usually like a, uh, an individual or a, a rover that breaks off from the line to cause some type of uh, chaos to your line. Then uh, last week we talked about, uh, about a three-person team. So two people break off instead of one. Now you break off three people. And we talked about different formations pertaining to the V and the Y uh, that work out quite well and different uh, scenarios. And I also uh, asked uh, you guys to do some homework on creating your own that you think <laughs> not, all, not just creating your own formations, but actually people that you know, that you say, I know this person's really good with pole arm. So I want to work with this person. And this other person is great with nine foot spear. So we're going to do uh, a lefty sword and shield, a pole arm and a spear combination, or two, two sword and shields and a pole arm or a spear. And uh, so we're going to get into that a little bit later. But what I'm going to talk about now is essentially uh, the movement and some of the formations, particularly in a melee. Melees don't last long. You no, go no. out and <laughs> say, all right, lay on, and you start marching. And I've been at Penzik where all of a sudden it's like, all right, let's get ready. And all of a sudden, hold. And then, all right, everyone, pop your tops. It's like, we didn't even hit anyone. <laughs> Are you yeah. serious? Because someone yeah. way down the line got hit, got injured, and we didn't even get a chance to fight yet. Yeah. Strange things like that happen all the time. But because it runs so fast, there's not really a lot of in-depth formations. You got the really basic formations, and then you got a few very specific commands to initiate movement. So uh, the one that we're going to talk about first is where you have, and we're just going to go with the five-person team as the smallest. You put all five of them. <laughs> Got it. And you go in a direction. Okay. When you're all five going in a direction, that's a line. Yeah. Now the line can be five, eight, 10, 25 people. The problem is, is the longer the line, the less straight it becomes. Yeah. And that's where the danger comes in. Because at any point, you're going to find, oh, well, there's a gap right here, or this person's going to go too far forward and die. And now there's a gap or a lane yeah. to try to rush on through. So trying to move up in a line in a small group is really not that hard because you can pretty much see and communicate well. 30 people. It's a joke. So when you do that, what you want to do is you want to stagger people, five people behind. So let me so you create a second line of five people. Okay. You can do a third line of five people or even a fourth line, however many that you want, okay? Once you get the line, multiple lines, it's called a column. Yeah. Okay. The column is the fastest way to move and the easiest to control communicatively. So therefore, if you got, like I said, you got 20, 30 people down the line, you have to be in the middle yelling and hoping that way at both ends, they can hear you. But if you got five people directly in front of you, they can hear you. You can touch them, each individual person, and say, all right, get ready to run. All right, get ready to stop. All right, very easy to command, very easy to make decisions. Now, the other nice thing about it 
is the fact that you can still create a line of 10 people, but instead of uh, moving as a line of 10 people, which as with everything else is when people start marching and stuff, people are gonna start yeah. slinking. Go, some people are gonna go fast, some people are gonna go, to, gonna go slow. If everyone is all in, just say these two lines right here, to create a column, all you have to do is say your next uh, your next command and say form right, which means this line now shifts as an entire unit to get online together. Now, what this does also is that while you're marching, you're not committed to what you are going to do. Now, you might have a plan and that's great, but you don't have to commit to the plan. Now, some people are like, well, that's just kind of stupid. The whole point is this, when you commit to the plan right away, guess what? The enemy can see your formation. They can see your composition of weapons. They can see your plan. If you march up behind each other and wait to the last minute and then initiate the formation that you want for battle, it's harder for them to adjust. It's harder for them to look and say, all right, I need to stay here. No, I, I need to go. No, no, I need to stay here. It causes That's like the... Whoa. Uh, that's like the single file attack. I, I got no idea why that's happening. What's happening? Um, I'm getting an echo. Oh. Yeah, I hear it too. Are your phones near the computer? Because sometimes that'll give an echo. Okay. Nope. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you fine. There's oh, no good. No end. more echo. Uh, so is that like the, say, three fighters in single line as they attack? They're going straight in, straight in, and then at the last moment, they fan out? Yep. They initiate okay. their attack formation. You have, a mo okay. you have a movement formation, then you have your attack formation. Okay. Now, usually if you go online, you, you can use whatever commands you want. So line right, which means the second people in the second row shift right and get online or line left. Now, if you want them to actually go ahead, so essentially the first line would be like a supportive line and the second line would be the attacking line then you okay. use, like, what we use in the military, we use the word bound or bounding. And we say bound left, which means you're actually going past your first line. So you're not going to it, you're going past it. Now, the one now are you going left past it? So we'd say bound left, bound right. And that means, because you're, like I said, you're in the back of the line, you're telling the closest people that can hear you the best, bound right, and all of a sudden they're going to go, and then they can okay. start shifting, wheel, flank, okay. whatever they want to do. But okay. at least you're telling them the movement and the direction that you want, and it makes it so it's much harder for the enemy to react quickly. Okay. So always pretty much line up in a column with your lines behind each other okay. then as you're initiating movement you're it depends on what your mission is again all right i'm going to bring up my support which means they're going to go against the strongest part of the wall that i see which is going to be probably the spears all right we're going to stay right here and as soon as we get and i always say it's usually one to two steps away from the position that you want you initiate your command, bound left. All right, then the okay. second group bounds to the left. And now the spears are like, oh crap, okay. Now they have to start thinking, which way am I gonna go? And you, what you're doing is, is that you're breaking up because you go towards the strongest part of the enemy. And this is just one technique. I'm not saying you do it all the time, but if you go towards yeah. the strongest part of the enemy and then you bound 
and break to one side, that yeah. strong part becomes weak because I start bringing people off the strong line yeah, yeah. to start controlling, yeah. oh, they're flanking, I better do this. So now what happens is once, there, it's kind of a strange thing. There's always a thing where it says, if you stop moving, you start dying. And it's very true. Whenever you want to uh, win, you always want to move. You always want to attack. You always want to advance. But if you want to kill the most, you have a solid, a solid line. Because in a defense, the enemy is just going to keep on attacking, attacking, and you're just whacking them or stabbing them and you're attriting them down to a lower thing. But at some point, you're still going to have to attack to kill the rest of them off. So you always have to move. When you see it, the line start to go back, you have to be wary of two things. Number one, that they're going back because, hey, they're losing. They're in a bad position. They need to get a stronger uh, formation or they're trying to draw you in into a killing pocket. Yeah. So it's a, it's a whole narrow uh, tunnel vision again, where it's like, all right, they're backing up. Ready, everyone? Uh, and you just go and you say, no, no, but, but no, I'm going to, I'm going to kill you and get you off my team. Whack, you're dead, <laughs> get off the team because you're going to kill us all. And yes, yeah. I have actually killed members of my own team. I hit them and they're like, why'd you do that? I killed you because you're being stupid. You're going to get everyone killed. Now get off the field. But a shot from the same person doesn't count. Whack! How many times do I have to hit you until you get off the field? Everyone gets that tunnel vision. Everyone gets that adrenaline rush. Everyone wants to, I am the victor of the world. We got it, but the best victor of the world is the smartest victor. Yeah. So whenever you do this, you always have to make sure that you are in command and that's the biggest thing. All right, I'm in charge. Okay, we're gonna do this. And then all of a sudden you hit the line and you're like, oh, uh, 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 uh. Nope, you have to have everything set in your mind. If they're gonna flank, I'm gonna do this. If they attack, I'm gonna do this. They start drawing me in. I'm going to tell everyone to stop moving, get back into a formation, and we're going to initiate a new type of uh, objective or mission, whatever you want to do. Okay. You're always in command. You always have an idea, and you're always looking to see what their weakest point is. Their weakest point might not be for five whole minutes. <laughs> and all of a sudden, it's like, man, we're just killing them. They're killing us. It's an even attrition rate, and then all of a sudden, oh, we just killed three of their spears. They're weak. Right there is their weak point because they were using that area to do a whole bunch of blocking. A whole bunch of them are dead. We got 17 seconds before they come in and fill that gap. Everyone attacked that hole right there. Yeah. You always want to exploit the weakness but you have to find the weakness, you have to create the weakness. Now, as you had said before, the final formation is the strongest, something like that. I'm trying to remember exactly what you said a little bit ago. Um, normally the first formation's good, the engagement is good, but then once we get into the mix, everything falls apart. I need to know what that final formation is. When I started out, all I was told was get to the other side and form up again, period. That was my orders. Okay. I got in my line, I charged through and I called a rally in the back of their line if I got through. Yeah, it wasn't very so informative, not everyone coordinated well. No one really knew exactly what we were supposed to do after we got through and then, all right, we got five people. How are we supposed to attack the line again? Do we hit a flank? What are we supposed to do? This is where you, when you get more and more experience, you have more and more, what I always say, junior commanders, because you always need to have junior commanders. All right, when we break off, 
if you find someone you need to if you're still alive you need to go find at least three other people make a four person fighting unit and attack two uh groups of two attack uh spears do something that you know you have the advantage and yeah. so training the junior leaders is massive now i'm going to tell you how to win a battle okay in the military, we have a thing called backwards planning. Okay. It is one of the greatest things that was ever created. Simple thing. <laughs> All right, I need to get to the grocery store. Now, how, now I have to think about, I'm at the grocery store. I need to think about every step from there. Okay, I'll need to drive there. So therefore I'll probably need directions so therefore, I will probably need car keys. I will need probably gas. I will need, and then you backwards plan to the point where it's like at the beginning, I know exactly what I need to do to be successful. Okay. Some of the basic stuff is easy. But when you come up with certain things like this, you go, okay, how do I make it? it is it all reactionary? All right, we're gonna go up here and then we're gonna sit in this formation then we're gonna wait and then we're going to react to the thing. Okay, that's, a, that's one way of doing it. And that's not bad, but if you wanna be very offensive, you wanna control the battle, you go to, this is the formation that I want that is going to kill the enemy. All right, so what I want is, I want to create a nice little kill L. Okay. Okay, so how am I going to do that? All right, so let's just go straight to the kill L. All right, I'm going to have, I'm going to have four on the side. I'm going to have five in front. And I'm still going to be out of the formation. Okay, okay. so now, what is the composition that I want to have to make sure I can cause the most damage, the most confusion, and can initiate pretty much any attack that they're going to do? Or, all right, I'm going to do this to make them shift, you know, change their formation, change their plan. So what I'm going to do is this. I am going to and sorry, can you guys see this well? Yeah. yeah. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have two spears. I'm going to have one spear here. I am going to take this guy and move him back. And I'm gonna make him a spear. So now I have spears at the corners. Okay. So therefore, I'll be able to go and attack this portion. And this person is going to be able to attack this portion. But I'm still going to be able to kill him. And he's going to be able to kill him. So I'm uh, cross shooting yeah. both my line and the next person. I want to make sure that this guy right here is a sword and shield. So in case something happens, they're not, going, they're not going to send someone off to try and kill this spear or this spear. So I want to make sure I have a strong corner. So I'm going to put a sword and shield here. Same thing here. I'm going to have a sword and shield on that side of the other spear. Yeah. And these two are going to be pole arms or great weapons. Since they're at the end, they can continue to flank, they can move. And if they have to, this person, if they try to outflank, this guy can step back here and create another wall. Okay. Okay. But this is like a second or third plan. But you tell them, your job right here is to kill. But if they start to try and flank around you, you have to protect the back. So yeah. your second job is to block. Okay, so now I got pole arm, pole arm, sword and shield, spear, 
sword and shield, spear. Okay, now what other composition do I want to have here? Where did you point again? I missed that. Uh, in these three on the front line. Is this the is this our only unit on the field, or is are we at the end of the line? No, we are the only unit. So we're we're a, a ten person unit fighting a ten person unit. Okay. All right. So we probably want to have some pole arms on that side too, because they could outflank us on that side. So I would I I agree. I would either bring this one back and make this one a pole arm. And the other two shields? And either, this one definitely has to be a sword and shield because he wants to, remember, you want a sword and shield on each yeah. side to protect, sword and shield on each side. Yeah. So at this point, I would either make this person a sword and shield or a pole arm. I would say, make this other person a pole arm also. Now remember, there's only nine people here. Uh, I'd make him a sword and shield, and mostly that's to uh, keep that into the line from being wrapped. Remember, I said, how many people are here? You said 10 on both sides. Yes, there's 10 on both sides. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's a 10. Right. I'm still the commander. I'm still 10. Oh, okay. 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 As the commander, I would be sword and shield. Like I said, I'm always sword and shield. But here's the thing. As the commander, say I decide to be polearm. Okay. I would make this one sword and shield, and I would take over polearm. Since I'm sword and shield, I may, I'll make this one polearm. And okay, so I would come over here after I initiate the command to get into this formation, I would do a quarter flank and essentially be an individual one person rover. And that would screw up their line completely because then they'd think someone's coming into the backfield. Right, so now they have to concentrate on this, they have to concentrate on this, and now the possibility of a rover or a flanker. So this is the formation that I want to create on okay. the field. Now let's backwards plan this. Okay. To get from here, how am I going to start it at the beginning? What I will do is, all right, the way the setup is, I'm going to have, I'll clean this off a little bit. I would think that you were having your secondary line move to the right. Yes. Move diagonally on that corner. Exactly right. Yeah. So for my formation, I would have I would have the uh, sword and shield. Bear. Spear is the next one in. Right. The, the what? The spear is the secondary one in? Yes, it would be the secondary one in, but here's the interesting part about it. Because of the way that the thing is set up, the spears are usually behind during movement. Or, or do you guys usually have the spears in front? No, uh -oh. we just have the spears move up once we set a line. Okay. So let's say that the two spears are in back. Okay. Okay. Now, at that point, I want to make sure that this spear will step forward and this spear will step to the side. So yeah. I tell them, this is what's going on. Now, because of this formation, I have multiple different ways that uh, I can move them and attack. And I'll get that and, and I'll get to that soon. I am off to the side here. Okay. I would have, so now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, how did we have this set up over here again? Was we it, had pole weapon 
Hold on. I got to go back a screen. Uh, there were two, two pole weapons on that side. No, th then we had four pole weapons on the line, two spears and four shields and three shields on the corner. So you had in the front pole weapon, pole weapon, shield, spear, the commander in the back. Then you had Uh, shield, spear, shield, pole weapon, pole weapon. Up the side is right. where I'm talking about. So we could do it like this, but remember, this is me, and that okay. means all of these people would have to flank. So what I would do is actually shift this spearman forward. Yeah. Make this a sword and shield. And then what I would do is I would make sure that this pole arm or this spear got here. This sword and shield went here. Pole arm. Pole. Yeah. Yeah. So I am making my entire flank from wheeling my back side. Around. Yeah. It looks like it's all wheeling around to that side. Wheeling. Yeah. You can either do a wheel right. or a flank yeah. or a wheel. Yeah. Whichever. Yeah, yeah, yeah is the best movement for your guys's thing. Yeah. So this is how I'm like, okay, so the pole arm, pole arm, sword and shield and spear. Yeah. And so this is how you guys are going to form up. Sword and shield here, sword and shield here to block, pole yeah. arm here. Now remember the pole <laughs> arm in back is supporting the pole arm in front. So when you okay. have two spears, because all this guy has to do is step back and this guy steps forward. And now you got okay. two spears evenly. So on the corner are the two spears and on both ends are the pole weapons. Right. We didn't have a pole weapon in between the spears, right? No, we had, um, we had sword and shield between the spears. Yeah, okay. Because remember, what's going to happen is if we don't have anyone here, yeah, all they're going to do is they're going to try and bust through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We need to make sure we have a good solid corner. Okay. And have this sword and shield kind of go back and forth to protect. Okay, so you were talking movement with the uh, the pole weapons from that back line to the wheeled around. Okay, got it. Those right there. Okay, yeah. Got it. <laughs> and then from here, we got sword and shield. Uh, and then we had another two pole weapons, right? Yeah. Or pole arm and shield, whichever one you want. And then I would come over here. To play. So now this is the formation that we will have at the beginning. All right. I need pole arm. Pole arm, sword and shield, spear, sword and shield. All right. Okay. Get up here, get into that formation. Now back here, you're going to be pole arm, pole arm. Okay. Uh, sword and shield and spear. Yeah. Okay. Now, when we relook at this in, uh, formation. Okay. And I'll draw it a little bit bigger. This is the makeup of the formation. Now, as you can see over here, we have a sword and shield, pole arm, pole arm. And then in front, pole arm, pole arm, sword and shield. Okay, so it's almost mm -hmm. a reverse of the front to back. Yeah. Over here, we have pole arm, sword and shield, 
sword and shield, I mean, uh, spear and sword and shield, sword and shield and spear, a mirror image of each other again. Yeah. So now, say for example, we're doing with this formation right here. If you saw this formation, honestly, we like I hadn't even told you this is what my plan was. Okay. If you saw sword and shield, sword and shield, spear, pole arm, pole arm, sword and shield. And then behind them you saw pole arm, pole arm, sword and shield, and then another sword and shield and spear. Would you think, oh, they have two swords and shields and four pole arms on one side of their for formation. Do you think that they're going to be going, that side is probably going to attack? Because it's yeah. very robot, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So they're expecting, oh, you know what? They're probably gonna take their swords and shield. I mean, their, their spears are gonna come up and they're going to plant in that corner and then they're just going to start kind of pivoting from a center. So therefore the, the spears are here and then the big group is just going to flank off or whatever, attack the thing. So what are they going to do? What is, if, if you saw this formation, what would you do as a commander to prepare for this formation coming? Counter flank. <laughs> What side? They would shift to the right. Why? Because they think that's where the big attack is going to come from. Exactly. So they're going to start shifting their formation to the right. They're like, yep. oh, okay, big guys over here because they're going to swing around. They're going to flank us. Yeah. So they're going to create a weak side on the left. And where am I going to initiate? Your flanker. <laughs> My flank is on the left. Yes. But remember, as I'm just gonna, I'm still that single sword and shield person that's gonna cut, take a couple steps out, and I'm watching, and they're like, "Ah, oh, shit!" He, that's where the he's gonna say charge, and they're just going to just, and I'll be like, "All right, everyone, get ready," and then I'll say shift or flank or whatever, and then the back line turns to the weak side. And now I got two nine foot spears that has a huge amount of damage and the two pole arms in back. My job at that point is to delay and hopefully maybe not die right away, but at least give them about 20 to 30 seconds where I'm trying to stop whatever flanking element that they have that they're gonna try and go past because they're like, oh shit, we're committed now. Excuse my language even though this is going to, I air these things. Or they're going to go, okay, we're going, oh no, everyone, shift left. And now their formation is destroyed because they came up with a plan. This is what we're going to do. This is not what they're doing. And we didn't come up with an alternate plan to fix it. So th that's why I say, whenever you're coming up with a formation, whenever you're coming up with a plan, you always want to, think ahead. This is the formation that I want. And now I need to make sure I place them correctly. So when they move, they move directly into the correct formation. But also I'm doing a deception plan because I'm putting so many strong weapons on one side. They're like, oh man, that group's, that side's going to attack or they're going to flank on the right, that type of thing. So whenever you do stuff like that, you always think multiple ways ahead. And at that point, all right, this is the formation. This is the configuration. This is the primary thing we're going to do. So when I yell flank right, second line, flanks to the right, get online, spears, do as much damage as you can. And now the pole arms that are on the side are very easily flexible. So they can essentially kind of yeah. herd the people in to the killing yeah. pocket. <laughs> and the shields are protecting the spears and the spears are causing the most damage. Then at that point, say that the formation's all just jacked up, everything is bad, the things go way out to the side. Tell everyone, reform. 
everyone get back together. All right, let's see what we have. We still have three pole arms and all of our swords and shields. All right, we create a cannonball and we just punch through everything. Because <clears throat> the sooner you can form up, the sooner you are going to have a stronger unit again. Okay. So that's where the backwards planning. I say this is the formation and I'm going to say this is how we're going to move into it. So when we get there, this is how I need you to form up. All right, now okay. when we start moving, we're gonna go back here and we're gonna start moving. And what we're going to do is maybe we're going to flank a little bit to the right to make them anticipate. Because here's the other thing, if you are on a unit and that unit is coming straight towards you and then they start shifting to your right, what do you automatically do? You normally um, start edging in that same direction. Right, because you always want to meet them. Yeah. So, or you could send out a small unit to disrupt them. <laughs> well, hi, Henry, uh, first line of defense. Yep, I've, we've been in that position a couple times. I told him to go in the woods against the two chucks, and he did. I think he broke his ribs too. <laughs> Damn tree battle. I didn't break any ribs. Or two chucks. I just got pummeled. <laughs> it is one of the worst battles ever. I try to stay out of that. Um, as much as possible. I've wrenched my knee several times in the woods, but it was my first year as Baroness, so I was leading my troops. <laughs> well, that's always good, but oh, you get stuck in a tree or a shrub or anything like that, and it's like, oh, I'm stuck. That's great. That makes it easier for us to hit you. Yeah, it's called entrapment. You can't hit me. Ah, oh, stop hitting me. <laughs> I like the one where they're like, fall down, fall down. I can't. There's a tree behind me. That happens a lot in the woods battle. Man, that, they need to shave down some tree limbs, cut some <laughs> brush, do something, because it's just way too much. Yeah, it, is. it is what it is. Yeah. So, uh, whenever you, so when you're commanding the unit, you always yeah. tell them, this is what I want. This is the plan. And once they come up and they're like, they, they see your plan and you're like, and they're like, oh, okay, I get it. They believe the plan. Yeah. That's the biggest thing because most people don't have a plan. You have a plan and you're like, this is it. This is what we're going to do. This is going to be the commands. This is what happens. If I die, Jim's in charge. If Jim dies before I do, I'm still in charge. And then Mary's in charge. And they're like, okay, okay, okay. We got it. We got it. We got it. And, and then, as long as you sound like you know what you're doing, people will follow you. If you don't, they won't. The other thing that a lot of people don't understand is you because you have the plan and you have everything in your brain in, in your mind on how it's supposed to work. Say, for example, you go out there and all of a sudden the not the pole arms on the flank, but the pole arms on the main line. Say all of a sudden, yeah. da, da 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 da, and both of them die. Yeah. Like, oh man, now we're weak. And the enemy's like, aha, get ready. We're going to, me as the commander, I need to run back. And I'm like, I'm so good. I'm as good as both those freaking. So you bring it on and I will destroy whatever you. And they're like, is this guy insane or is he just that good? Come on, let's but try. You got him to pause. You've got him to pause. And sometimes that wins the battle. Exactly. And that, that's exactly it. You create, you have destroyed their momentum. You've destroyed their formation. You've destroyed their plan. Yep. So if, if when you do that, even if you failed, people are like, oh man, you know, we didn't win, but you know what? We lasted three minutes longer than I ever thought we would. <laughs> and man, when, when Ulrich came over there and blocked our side, it was like, <laughs> Whatever your plan is, I'm going to do it because I know you're, you you saw what was going on and you made sure. And then I always <laughs> say this too. The best way, even if you're going to die, you're like, you know what? We're not going to win this. Everyone, form back up. Reform. Get here. Ready? Sure. 
and you just people are like yeah, glorious death it's it's better to go out swinging than yeah. uh be shot by an arrow <laughs> oh yeah so many people are like all right i'm going to really arrow I spent Bro, one war where seventeen every time I got hours a for an arrow. <laughs> oh, I drove eighteen hours down to Gulf Wars once, and I spent every battle with someone shooting me with an arrow, except for the ravine, where they didn't allow archery. I was so happy. I went nuts. It was yeah, a lot of fun. If you have control, if you have a plan and you are able to do this, people are like, did you just see that? That was the best freaking formation I've ever seen. How did you do that? <laughs> and they're like, hey, I got uh, me and two other people are, are here by ourselves. Can you be okay if we joined your unit? Heck yeah. Just come on over. Just tell me what weapon styles you have and I'll work it into the system. Now, as far as that's concerned, I get a lot of people dropping into my line because they know me, but I haven't worked with them. And there's not a lot of cohesiveness where that is concerned. Which side of the line or where in the line do you put those? I always have brand new people. I'm like, all right, you're part of my reserve. You're gonna be behind me. And I will go and I'll say, Jim, you're the pole arm. Okay, we got two pole arms that just went down. Jim, take over one of the pole arm spots. Okay. Okay. You just tell them what you want. You tell them the job and they'll do it. Okay. If they can work. So they become the reserves. Yes. So that when my shield goes down or my pole weapon goes down, I go fill that gap. Exactly. Okay. Because now they're not just cannon fodder. They know, hey, I'll go here. I'm not part of the team. I'll just go there and okay, I'll survive for 15 seconds and then I'm going to die. Nope. You're going to survive longer. You're going to do exactly as I say. So, all right. Laura, get over here. All right. You're a Florentiner. You're a terrible Florentiner. But this is what I want you to do. I want you to go up there and I don't want you to swing a sword. I want you to just go stab, 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 stab. Nothing else. Do not try and swing that sword. You just stab the crap out of everyone. You keep distance. You make them go, what the heck is that person doing? You give them a job and they will go out there and they will have the time of their life. But that person is there to be the distraction, not the actual killer, right? Well, no, I'm just giving that as an example. Okay. Hi, Kalara. <laughs> Good old Ooga Booga duty. Yes. Uh, one of the things okay. when I first started, there was a, a knight by the name of Jafar. Uh, I think I told you about him. He was knighted at 21, king at 21, died at 25. Uh, it, was, oh, no. it was, yeah, he had a, he had a hmm. uh, flesh eating bacteria thing, and he was a prince at the time. He was oh, like no. a he was like five foot six, really short black man with a really high voice. He's like, all right, hey, how's it going? I'm Jafar. And I'm like, get the fuck out of town, really? Okay. <laughs> he showed up to a fighter's practice when he was like 18 over in Ohio. And he now this, this is the story that I heard. He's like, ah, that's so easy. Anybody can do it. And they're like, oh, really? Okay, let's put on some armor on you. So they put armor on and they just beat the shit out of him. He's like, yeah, we'll never see him again. Shows up next week. All right, that was fun. Let's do it again. It was like, <laughs> yeah. but he but he fought with Florentine, and he was mobile as everything. And since I knew Jafar, all of a sudden after that, every time we fought in melees, Jafar was always the rover. He would because he's out there Florentine. He'd like run around, yeah, and everyone was like, now it's right. Right. That's concerned. Okay. <laughs> Do you make the Florentiners rovers normally, or would you put them on the line or a corner? A, a good Florentiner will either be a, a rover by themselves because they're going to be very good, or 
Okay. I make them part of a two-person team where I say, whatever happens, you protect that spearman with every ounce of your body. Okay. Because okay. they have the capability, but they also, if they're really good, like I said, they're a rover. If they're not very good, they're a protector because they can keep people at range, cause delays. So even if they can't kill them, another sword and shield man might be able to come out. Another pole arm might be able to reach them in time to kill. So, but okay. like I said, Florentiner gives distance. So therefore, instead of just doing this, I always say, like I, I said it jokingly, but it's true. I want you to pre protect that spearman. So that person's next to the spearman. They can't be doing this because they're going to hit the spearman. So therefore, it's like they're just out there and they're just doing a whole bunch of thrusts. And then maybe they can throw okay. a shot. But I always tell everyone, start thrusting first because you want to create an opening and keep range. But if they get in close enough where they can strike you, the chance is that they're not trying to attack you. They're trying to attack the spearman. So you don't want them close enough. Okay. Okie dokie. So this is how I am successful as a commander. Because I go through, this is what I want to do. This is the steps. This is how I'm going to move. This is the final formation. This is the biggest killing pocket that I can create. This is the mount, a most distraction. This is how I can deceive the most. Uh, I'll give you another... Now, before you go on, let okay. me ask this. Yeah. All of these, all the um, backward planning, all the plans, all the initial plans that you have and the plans after the charge um, happens and you reform, all of that happens on the field or before the field when the troops get there? I will come up with about my main, my main course of action. This is what I want to do to be successful. This is the formation that I want. This is the composition. This is it. But if I don't get that, then I have to recalculate on what do I want to do. So at that point, I, can, I come up with this is my best course of action that I can come up with. But if not, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that, okay, we're going to split it evenly this time. So we're not going to have two spears. What we're going to do is we're going to have three spears. I'm going to put two on one side, one on the other. So I balance it out. So you will always adjust your formation and composition to still try and get the formation, the final formation that you want. But if okay. you can't, then you come up with another plan or whatever like that to what it is. And that's when it comes to be on the field. But say, for example, I was in your guys' barony and we're all going to go to an event. And I'm like, all right, for the, for the two months before the event, every other Saturday or Sunday, we're going to get together and we're going to go through formations. We're gonna go through movements. All right, and we're going to say, this is what's going on. And, and they're like, five of us want to do spears. Okay, we have to now do a defensive line. Okay, I'll create swords and shields in front, spears in back. And I will go pole arm on one side and I'll put a pole arm on the other to try and stop flankers. At that point, I would now at that point, hey, what other barony or what other groups going or household? Hey, how about this? How about if we are on your left flank because we'll be able to be like the pivot wheel. We got five spearmen right here and we're on your side right there. We can either be a killing pocket that's going to roll them or you can now control this and we're creating like a blocking area because they can't move because we're, we got so many spears. Okay. It's, you always try and have as many possibilities as possible. But yeah, on the field, I will come up with, this is my primary course of action. This is what I want to do. If not, the way my system is set up here, what we're going to do is we're going to take and we're going to uh, shift all the swords and shields and spears 
So I would shift over to the two spears and the other two swords and shields. And now we got three swords and shields and two spears. And I'll tell the other four, Polarn, you're now going to be the flankers because you're still strong. But instead of attacking the strong side, I want you to back around and attack the weak side. And when they start flanking, we're going to take our spears and try and stop them. So you always have a primary and you have a secondary of what can happen. Uh, but then again, okay. also, you might not know their composition because you're hoping that they're going to react to you. Well, they say you guys all go out there and all of a sudden they all go online. And it's like, really? All 10 of you online? All right, this is what we're going to do. We're going to change this. All right, all the, all the pole arms are going to go straight in the center. We're going to go uh, shields on the outside. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put the two spears on either side of the pole arms. And we're going to punch through the center. The pole arms will go on through, flank on the outside. And then the swords and shields will stop them from engulfing us. And we're just going to create a wall to try and let the spears on our side attack the outside while our pole arms bust on through and start killing down the line. I could see me dying horribly. <laughs> Let's hope not. You're... Now we're planning that this is the 10 on 10, not a 10 on 5. Right. No, I mean, it, right? it, it's, no, it's still 10 on 10. But instead okay. of, say, so we're like this and they're like this. So therefore, they have no, no one in back to help them. So as soon as we create an opening, our group in back floods their back line. Okay. So that's why I would put the pole it's arms in the middle and then put the two spears okay. and then the swords and shields on the outside. And then the pole arms go through, da 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 da. Even if they don't make it through, they'll cause an opening where the other two pole arms can come in and they both of them can go flanking on one side or breaking off. They should stay together. Uh, <laughs> and then at that point, you got the pole arms. They're still at nine foot distance, still causing them to not charge the, the swords and shields. But if they do, swords and shields will protect them until the pole arms kill everyone. So there's when you go in there, you, you have to think about readjusting on the fly. This is my, like I said, composition for this. Okay, this has changed. I can still do it, but it's a big waste of time because I'm putting a whole bunch of people attacking four, and there's a whole line of six that I'm not even attacking. So it's it's not going to work real well. So you have to, at that point, just on the fly and say a weak line is susceptible to punching on through. So we're going to punch on through instead. So you always have multiple course of action. Okay. Let's see, anything, other notes I can think of. The biggest thing is going to be um, exploitation. As the commander, you have to be able to see what is the weakest point? What is the strongest point? What, are they going to be offensive? Are they going to be defensive? Are they going to do a lot of moving? Are they going to flank? Are they going to put, as you say, all the knights are going to be on one side and they're all going to fight by themselves. Oh, hey, that's great. Everyone attack the group because all the knights are not going to fight with them. They're going to be weak. We punch on through and then we just have to fight as a larger unit against the knights. So all these different types of scenarios. Okay, so Heinrich, what was your uh, combination that you thought of again? Uh, Left-handed sword and shield, right-handed sword and shield, and a pole arm. And the pole arm in the middle? Uh, uh, I guess, yeah. Well, no, it's, it's your formation, man. It's your formation. You got to tell me. Remember, this is what you guys want to do at fighter's practice. Okay. So I figure the pole arm moves where he's needed or where he sees an opportunity. But does he start out in a V position or a Y position? 
why dang yeah. it at, a, at an ang why at a why at, at a lowercase why yeah it's a I mean, probably at a V, because at the very least he can he can thrust between the two shields if he needs to. Okay, up. as a good starting against whoever you're fighting. So, who are you going to put as a left-handed sword and shield? Remember, you got to come up with people and stuff. Well, that would be me. Okay, who's the pole arm? Uh, it 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 could be Mary or it could be uh, my my house dad John. Okay, <laughs> who's the other sword and shield? Uh, it could be my, my friend Hakan, or it could be another uh, uh, belt brother, Marcus. Okay. So what are some of the plans on both, when I said uh, the two-minute drills, both two minutes of offensive and two minutes of defensive? Have, did you think about how you want to work together where you're like, all right, me and the pole arm right away? or I'm the better fighter, so I'll have the pole arm go with the other sword and shield, and I will try and do a distraction move. Um, but I hadn't really thought that, I mean, I figured everyone would practice everything because you don't know what's gonna happen. Uh, what the but here's opportunities the, are. And that's true, but it's amazing how when you actually work with very specific people, you're gonna find both the uh, strengths and weaknesses of people. Some people will be like, yeah, this is really good, but he cannot move. He is like the slowest rock in the world. So- Or you've got a very good pole weapons person, but they hate making that initial engagement. That is a big problem on the line. I'll give you, you a, oh, sorry, yes. You know you're going to have to run at some point just because the battle is going to move away from you. You've got to negotiate. You've got to figure out who runs fast and you know do you slow down to the slowest person or do you do you make a formation to accommodate you know to, to let the fast guy get there first and then and then what happens or maybe two people are really fast. Um, Sir Sir Teron, uh, I'm, I'm sure Mary remembers. He's from years ago. Uh, he was another, you know, shorter fighter, and he really emphasized speed. You'd think he was a football player. The guy, the way he was talking about running around. That's because every time he fought sword and shield, he was like on crack. He had to be everywhere, yeah. everywhere. Okay, oh, now another interesting thing. You, he, you said he was sword and shield. Yep. Was did he uh, fight center grip shield? Mm hmm. Oh, how did I know that? Think. Well, he had a he had a big heron on his shield. Uh, yeah, he had a center grip. A center grip. His squires have center grips too. Now, here's the thing, Kalara. What we're trying to discuss is not the initial off the field lineup, but after troops start moving and how to force them into what you want them to do. Like if I wanted to flank, how to get the troops there, or the if the other line, and composition. yeah, or if the other line sets, how to engage them so that we win. <laughs> I'm just saying, it. punch punch through and reassemble, and then come out the other side. I don't know, Hi, Heinrich. Yeah. Heinrich, it's your show. Oh, it's your formation. I just wanted to say a thing. <laughs> Thank All you. Right. Thank you. Well, I definitely don't like to run. So, uh... <laughs> and then, so you become either the wall or you become the clubber. You go out there, big shield, wall, and you're, everyone's like, ah, oh, get out of his way. He's going to just run you over. And that's, that's a very positive thing, too, because it's like, if you are, let's say six foot four and 285 pounds of all muscle and you're out there in this big round shield, it's like, yeah, we're gonna put him in the middle of this formation. No one's gonna get through our formation or should I put him in reserve and therefore I can have him fill a, a weak gap. 
Now, it depends on the experience of your line, too. Or Most what of my people are beginners or intermediate. That's so true. that big person on the line may be the anchor, but also may be the deterrent so that the beginners actually get into combat. So that is correct. If it's an experienced line, I'd hold them in reserve until I had to, you know, unclick that leash and let him go. Because <laughs> he may not be all that controllable. No, that's true. Or do you want to put them at the corner where people are like, yeah, I'm not going there. Because he, he's going to take two gigantic steps out and just crush me. Well, you, you also have to have some knowledge of who's on the other side. Exactly. Like, like most kingdom events where you're doing melee, you know who's on the other side. They're picking teams like they do in volleyball in high school or whatever. And they do the same formations, the same movements. Yes. And you need to track these fighters throughout the fighting season to, to see how they move with their crew, but also what they're not willing to do. Right. Because what they're not willing to do may be what you need to set up to keep them out of your back for you. Um, so you really, you have to know the other side a little bit, at least the weapons mix at the very least. Um, but you also have to have your line more experienced in the engagements, not just the punch throughs or the uh, pulse charges or whatever, but in non-communicative movement. Like if right. I start going that way and my troops just stay there going, where's Mary going? <laughs> We've already lost that one. <laughs> we really have. Mary's doing because it wrong. Because if I'm going that way, if I'm going that way, Back they better head. be that step behind me. <laughs> nope, and that's it. You either lead from the front or you lead from the rear. Yeah. And I am someone who's a big proponent of leading from the rear, not very far from the rear, but I'm in command. So if I go out there and I die right away, it, it's one of those things where it's like, oh, dang, Ulrich's, Ulrich's dead. What do we do now? You still follow the plan. Who's the next person in charge? Well, I've always tried to lead from the front, but also each my next in command and the next in command and the next in command what to do if it is their time to leave. Um, Cause I die a lot. I don't we'll know how die, it got Mary. Huh? We'll die a lot. It's nothing to be ashamed of. Bye. <laughs> I know. Don't, it's like, it's like it. if you're bad at math. No, I love math. it, but I I die a lot in melee. Everybody dies a lot, even Brad, um, even. Yeah, even but me. as a commander, as a commander, Kalara, my job is to stay alive so that I can order my troops around. Yes, it really Thank is. You. Because but remember, I you're supposed to be friends. also good enough where you're like, you know what? I can kill this entire line by myself, but I'm gonna let my people do it just to let them get the experience and the joy. Okay, okay, <laughs> if you put it that way, I'll let my troops have some fun. But it's all about me, me. Oh shoot, it's after eight. Oh. I've got to jump, but you guys keep talking. I will watch the recording this next week and pick up where you guys left off, okay? All right, sounds good. Okay. Thanks, I've got work to do before I go to bed. Eek. Have fun, guys. Don't forget to put your time in. <laughs> Sorry. So, who would you put in as, okay, first, how many fighters do you guys usually have I think he said around 10, maybe 15, 20 at fighters practice. Um, 
it really depends on on the practice. I mean, when we were having them regularly, sometimes it might be two or three, sometimes it might be 12. Okay. So it, it, it really depends on who shows up and who they bring. If you had, I mean, I don't know if you're the night marshal or the, the main fighter guy for your group, I don't know. Uh, but if you were in charge of your group and you're like, all right, I'm going to have uh, Mary as our commander and I'm going to have Heinrich as the frontline leader and I'm going to have uh, Kalara as the second line leader. Who would you put down as your two main leaders for each five man group that you got? Oh, so you're talking about if, if you're talking about people we can actually muster for a war, that's very different. Well, I mean, you guys still should practice because you guys still should practice as a group and have a commander for each part of the group. So, all right, but we we it, it, it's a little, we don't really have a very big roster in Ponte Alto specifically. And okay. a lot of people we do have are in are in other household units, rather than okay. than fighting with the baronial unit. So when you guys fight with the other units, they probably have their own commander. Uh, yeah, there's like two or three baronies that have a really cohesive and large unit in Atlantia, and ah. then sort of the rest of everyone else just sort of globs up. Okay. I would still say, you know what, what we need to do is we need to have at least two junior leaders, one, one commander for each line. And if we can get a third line, then we'd have a third commander. And so I'd say, all right, like I said, Heinrich, you're commander number one, you're on the, on the main line. Your job is to make sure that everyone is doing their job, of course, number two, making sure everything is communicated, i.e. you go there and you say weak spot, weak spot, and then you point to it, then therefore we know, hey, that's an opening that we need to do. Or you say, they're getting ready to rush. They're getting ready to rush. And you always repeat commands over and over again because yep. a lot of times people don't hear it the first time or they're like, oh, is, is it our side? Oh, okay. But things like that as a commander is very important to know and to make sure that everyone listens to you. They know your commands. You can say, all right, form up or reform, whatever it is, they're like, all right, because you're saying it your way with your words, it just becomes like muscle memory ingrained on, all right, reform, oh, oh, where's everyone? Okay, let's get back. So, so that's what I would do is during some of your practices, all right, I want on my team of five people, these four, and I'm going to practice with these four. I'm going to do two on ones. I'm going to do three on twos. I'm going to get them good and comfortable and working well together. And then I'll start putting them together in the lines and we're going to do this. Then I'm going to work with the other commander of the second line. And so you and uh, uh, Kalara are like, all right, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to do this, and you're going to do this with your group. All right. And and then she goes, all right. So when do you want to want me to initiate? Uh, I'll say, all right. One of the things that I do verbally is I say, ready. Everyone says ready. Okay. If I say ready, 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 <laughs> if I say ready one way, it means, all right, we're going to attack. If I say ready twice, what do you think that means? Charge. Or prepare to receive. Prepare to receive <laughs> the beating of your life. <laughs> mm. 
my first ready is ready and everyone's prepared to do whatever it is, attack or defend. So I'll say ready, attack, ready, defend. I always want to say hold, which always gets me in trouble because I want to say hold the line. It always bothers me. If I say ready, ready, it means whatever it is is a fake. Okay. So if I say ready, 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 it means reset. Whatever the whatever the formation is, we're going back to basic because it's not working. <laughs> so in football, I'm calling an audible. <laughs> but that's how me as a commander, when I communicate, I've worked with the people enough to know, hey, this is what it means. This is what I'm doing. All right. Same thing. If, if Kalara isn't back and she goes, ready, ready. Oh, oh, it's a fake. Ready. Oh, we're resetting. OK. This isn't working. Obviously, she sees something. We're not going to do it. Or instead of just, you know, ready, ready, ready. That type of stuff. So whenever you whenever you work together as a group, the reaction time that it takes to attack, counterattack, flank, or whatever like that is so much faster. And that's what really wins a lot of the things because all right, they're trying to reform. They're not really quite there yet, but they're reforming. They're going to try and do a push. All right, ready. Yeah. I want to say create. Oh, hold again. It's not a hold. You know, form up. Uh, shields, form up. They're charging. And they're like, ah, oh, crap. They got, they, they saw what we were doing. We didn't get there in time. So, as in the military, we always call it a, a, a preparatory command. You, you say one thing, so you say group, platoon, squad, whatever, to get everyone to focus in on what you're about to say next, because that's the most important thing. So, like I said, these, these tricks that I've learned from the military work so well because a lot of people are not trained and as we discussed earlier, all right, uh, just punch on through the line and meet in the back. Okay, and then do what? Okay, give us more information. If we don't punch through, uh, do we still go to the side because we're not dead, but there's too many people there? If we do punch through, are we supposed to wait till we get 10 people and then we attack? If we go back there, what are we supposed to do? I mean, you have to give complete follow-on orders and an idea because uh, whenever you're saying, this is what we're trying to do, okay, what's the end state? And that's the most important thing that the, that the military actually teaches is we are going to do this while on order to do this, uh, to get to this point for the end state to capture the city with the least amount of people from an envelopment. So therefore, everyone knows Okay, what's the goal? We need to get into the city and we're going to do it by enveloping it. So we know the overall plan. Now we know how, you know, I'm over here. I really need to go over here because that's what's going to get into the city. Instead of I'm over here and I don't know what's going on because no one told me the complete plan. People don't have to be told the complete plan if they know what the final end state, the final goal is. And then you just pretty much refocus what's important at the time. Oh man, I'm all, I'm all by myself. I need to find at least two other uh, of my friends so we can form a fight as a group. So that, therefore we're more dangerous. All right, we're gonna have uh, our, our secret call sign, challenge and password to say, where are you is chicken little, chicken little. And you hear Chicken Little. All right, I'm going over to Chicken Little. <laughs> oh, we got an entire squad of Chicken Littles. I mean, sure, if you've got enough breath for all that screaming with your with your 50 pounds of gear that you happen to be wearing and your sword and shield, and all you're running around. I'm actually wearing <laughs> chest armor. 
<laughs> Although if, if I'm wearing, if I'm fighting with spear, I'll, I'll put on some type of chest armor, but. Oh, I can already tell you're one of these fighters who doesn't run around much. I like to leave from the back. <laughs> sure. I don't like to run. <laughs> There's, well, there's a lot of people where, especially after you've been doing one or two hours of melee, no one can run anymore. Or it's the people that can, it's like, dude, don't run. But I really, no, no, no. You're going to go 10 feet and have a heart attack. Just walk, okay? You got plenty of time. We will have the walking squad at this point. All right. So, Heinrich, you're in charge yeah, of the walking the squad. All right. Two Just, hours or so, two or four hours. We always end up running into the wrong team, into the wrong group. That happens a lot too. Yeah, we call that battle mosey. <laughs> That's nice, battle mosey. Uh, I'll get there soon. Don't worry. I'm the reserve. <laughs> Until you find the yellow jacket smith. Oh God! Somebody kill them! Kill them! Somebody beat me! Oh. They spray um, every year. They don't get them. So have you thought about any other things that you guys want to try and do for your own barony or types of things that you want to focus on as a melee group? Um, like those, those sort of two and three man drills, I think, would be very helpful. Um, they, just they, so that, they are, that they if, are if, wonderful. If we get into we get into a broken field, at least people know what to do and they can delay or they can, you know, kill someone, you know, un unfairly and quickly. I, the, um, main, the main few things that I always try and, and just keep on repeating all the time, don't try and kill them, just leg them. Always don't try for the kill. The leg is the, one of the best ways. The second thing, as you were just saying, don't fight by yourself. Find a small group, two, three. You can get up to four or five. That's even better. You're much more. And then you start commanding that group. It's so beneficial. It it may it shows everyone that you know what's what you you know what you're doing and you know what has to be done. Yeah, I, I, I've seen it a lot that that the Atlantean army were we're generally decently trained. Like we have war practices. We've, we've trained, we've drilled formation movement, stuff like that and commands. It's just that we are lacking that sort of one in 10 commanders in the front line to shout out the commands. So I get up in the front line and I'm there. I'm like, okay, I'll stand here. I'm gonna block spears. I'm gonna stand here. I'm gonna die slowly, but no one ever tells me what else to do. So I just stay there forever until the battle's over one way or another. Yeah, it gets a little frustrating at that point because you want to take the next step, both in your professional development, your, okay, leadership abilities. And at that point, what I tell people is, hey, I'll assume that my commander is dead because my commander is not saying anything and I will take over command. Everyone take one step forward. Ready, step, ready, step. Ready, ready. That, that's ready. what happened at the. Uh... We'll actually stick around to hear you yell at them like that. Ready, ready, ready. Oh my God, who are these? The people? last, the, the last fighting? real, well, the I last real people. Kenzik we had. Um, it was the last battle, and it was sort of like a bridge battle, and the orders from up high were were we're fighting two trucks, we're fighting mercenaries, we're bigger than them, like physically. Um, the two trucks weren't taking shots very easily, so the, the, the order was just move them. Uh, and, and, you know, if there's ever a hold, as soon as Leon is called, charge. Don't wait for a command. Um, so I got in there. I was, I was with a pole arm just because I hadn't used it all war and I wanted to. So I'm, I'm sort of second rank. And we're going and we're pushing, we're pushing. And then there's a, an extended hold, long injury. We were hold for like 15 minutes. Things start up again, and I see people doing what they're used to. They get in line, they start poking at the other side and, and trying to kill them. And I said, no, this, this is not the orders. And I just start yelling out, step, step, step. And sure enough, 
everyone just started moving and we pushed them off. Because people, I hate to say, it, people want to be told what to do. It's not that. They want to do something, but they want to do it as a group, as a team. And unless someone actually says it, they have a tendency of stopping and waiting for someone to say something. So you did perfectly what needed to happen. How many times have you guys actually fought as a barony together at different things? And not really um, like members of I other mean, households? Each, each Penzik, and I want to say there's two or three other larger kingdom melee events where we'll form up as a barony. Um, though I missed out on a couple of those last year because I was training for marshal for marshalling. I had to miss out on a couple of events. There's defending the gate is the big one. It's for yeah. a little bit further south. Battle on the bay, so it's good yep. melee. Uh, there's Highland River melees. Yep, those south, are the three big ones. A little bit in the middle of nowhere. Oh, and War of the Wings. I haven't been to that. Yeah, it's definitely a, a larger kingdom event, and it's it's a lot of melees. Okay, now what do you think is the next step you need to do? To become a better commander. And this is going to be where we jump into next week's type of discussion. Um, probably, I guess, I guess it's like, it, like I said, in that last battle at Penzik, I knew what the plan was. So it was pretty obvious what order should be given. But there are other times when, sure, I could take command, but I don't necessarily know what should I be telling people to do. OK, uh, let me jump back to the uh, uh, those events where you marshaled at, right? OK. You didn't get to fight, right? Right. What could you have done, though, to make the next lap, uh, leap or step in melee fighting. Like if I was fighting there? You're not fighting there. Just watching. What's the next level above commanding? What, like the, the leader strategizing? You create the scenario. OK. So therefore, like most of the stuff we're talking about right now is kind of a basic <laughs> field battle types up. But now let's talk about how do we do formations and movement on a bridge? How do we do it uh, against a castle or uh, in, in a ravine the in the woods? Everything battling in a ravine is so much different than fighting it because you always want to try and get the high ground because, hey, if all else fails, you do a charge, you're using gravity to push you through. So, uh, and it, it, that's why they always put like the, the town centers or the flags or whatever the, that they do in the valley over in Gulf Wars. So therefore no one has the advantage. So therefore the next thing is to create new different scenarios because all right, I'm not fighting because I'm the marshal, but you know what? That means I'm in charge of this thing and we're going to do a broken bridge. All right, everyone, this is how we're going to do it. And now you're in charge. Now people are like, oh, this guy knows everything what's going on. So therefore, uh, he's creating the scenarios for us to think about, create a plan, work together as a group. So that's, that's really the next step for you to go from being a commander to creating the scenarios. So, and that's when we're, we'll talk next week about, you know, a bridge battle, a castle battle, uh, a breach battle, which is like a hole in the wall type thing. Uh, so, but yeah, things like that where you still just don't progress as a fighter. You progress as a fighter, then as a small group commander then as an entire group commander, then as an army commander, and then you command the entire field. 
uh, like I said, I did a, 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 I was in charge of one of the battles at Gulf Wars. People showed up and they're like, I didn't tell anyone what it is. It was a mystery battle. I told, all right, it's a single arm, single weapon tournament or a melee. So you can only use one sword and one arm. And people were like, this is blank. <laughs> and some people walked away. And another knight was like, yeah, you know what? I've never tried this before. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna do it. And he was like the biggest cheerleader out there. He was like, this is so much fun. Oh my God, I never even thought about this. Oh, I'm using muscles. I, oh, this is gonna really hurt tomorrow. <laughs> But I made it fun. I made something different from what was normal. Because it's like, oh, it's another open field battle. Oh, it's another bridge battle. Oh, it's a broken town battle. Oh, it's this. And after a while, it becomes a lot of the same stuff. So you add different things. All right, no, no, uh, no nine foot spears, only six foot. All right, changes the dynamic of the battle. All right, we're going to have, you want to go and cause conflict? This is a problem because pretty much everyone does sword and shield, but if you make it where it's not, no sword and shields can be used unless it's a small buckler. People would be like, say what? You want, ah, ah, this is, this is, this is good. This is going to hurt. <laughs> but I, I have seen it, it really does upset at least a small portion of people when you tell them what weapons to fight or what weapons they can't fight. Right, but you gotta you gotta make it different. You gotta make it interesting. Even tournaments, we had the one that was called the Wheel of. Uh, I can't remember. It was. Uh, we we called it the Plague Rat tournament that because it was, and what it was is it was two two wheels. You spun one and it said what you fought with your with your right hand. You spun the other one and it's whatever you could hold in your left hand. And so I spun. All right, sword spun the other one, and it was weapon of choice. I said, anything I want? They're like, yeah, anything you want. So I go in my tent, and I get my three-foot body pillow that I slept on. <laughs> and I come out there with a pillow <laughs> and a sword, and they're like, say what? <laughs> and this guy goes, wham, and hits the pillow, and he goes, Doo -doo -doo. <laughs> the pillow wraps around the sword. And he's like, no. <laughs> so I went, I hit him in the leg. He goes down to his leg. I drop the sword. I jump on him with the pillow and I suffocate him with the pillow. I mean, <laughs> nice. You got to do things differently. You got to have fun. You got to, but that's the point when you are past the whole, I'm not saying knowing everything, but you're very comfortable with commanding. You're very comfortable with being able to adjust. You're very comfortable with your team. You're very comfortable with uh, whatever it is and you bring it to the next level. I'm going to do this because I haven't done this yet. Ah, oh, you know what? I usually fight sword and shield. I'm going to go nine foot spear. I'm going to try something different. And then you grow in different ways of fighting in a fighting different weapon style than you normally do. I believe I said that usually in a melee, when I fight melee, I fight nine foot spear. But if I'm commanding in a melee, I fight sword and shield. Because I have better command, I can, I can block and defend a lot longer, so I can command more. But if I just want to go out and I just want to kill people, I go nine foot spear and I'm just getting people and it's fun. So you have to be able to adjust back and forth from Am I fighting or am I commanding? And that's when you let your junior leaders, all right, junior leader, Jimbo, you're in charge this time. All right, we're gonna go like this. Ah, oh, I don't. <laughs> but that's okay. That's the way that they learn more than anything else. All right, we'll probably uh, end this up for the nights if it's been an hour and a half already again <laughs> all right uh, so now your next homework assignment 
Yeah. If you're going to command a five person team to include yourself, I want you to, to say, if I was just fighting a five on five or a generic five person that I could move that five person in with another household and fight with them and that we'd have be very comfortable and we can adjust. I want to know what composition you would want for your five person team. Okay. And you can have more than one combination. You can say, you know, if we're going to be doing uh, an open field, I'd want this. But if we're doing a castle, I'd want this, something like that. And then we'll talk about, like I said, uh, a bridge battle, castle battles, things like that. Sounds good. Okay, I'll think about that. All right. Well, thank you all very much for showing up again. That's always great and enjoying. I know I personally love talking about all this. <laughs> and it's a great way to still think about it and hopefully come up with a good plan. So when we do get to start to fight again, we just like have so much energy and just want to take over the world. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you very much. Right. And I'll see you again next week. See you next week. Thank you.